Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode, we took care of the dynamic camera. The camera now follows the character, it gives a little nice rotation, it has a nice smoothing in effect, it follows the character along as the character moves about. In today's episode, I'd like to take a look at creating an environment that will fade out whenever it occludes the character. Alright, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing we need to do is actually build uh, some some environment that's going to actually include our character. So let's start off by building a wall. Uh, I believe I included within your assets the a wall. Let me see. Let me scroll down here. It will have the name wall just like this. All right, and you can simply drag it and drop it in place. Now it's going to be too large, so I'm going to reset. So we've zero, zero, zeroed it, and uh, it's going to be far too large, just like the floor. So we're going to reset the scale to its decimal zero to five decimal 025 and decimal 025 025 all right and that's our wall now right now it's got this weird pink color and that's because the the I don't actually have a material associated with it right now I'm gonna make a a simplistic material we're gonna make changes to it in a minute so I'm just gonna come over here to materials uh, I actually have one right here I'm just gonna delete it delete so we can do it together one more time yes I want to delete it uh, I'm gonna say create I'm gonna say brand new material bang bam new material I'm gonna rename this to wall material. I'm going to leave it as a standard shader for now. I'm going to leave it as opaque for now and I'm going to change the albedo to this crew platform yellow and afterwards I can simply drag it and drop it in place and that's going to give us a, a yellow wall. Okay, Just like that. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that the character can the character can interact with this wall and that means I require some colliders. I need something to make sure the, the player can't walk through the wall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into wall, right here, walls. I'm actually going to go into the second section and I'm going to add a component right now. Add component and I'm going to add a physics and I'm going to add a box collider. Now just like with the floors, we've got ourselves a collider that takes up the entire space associated with this actual object, with the mesh itself. You can see that the square perfectly fits the mesh itself, all right, all the, the largest extensions of it. I don't actually want that to be the case. I'm going to shrink this down a bit so that it's more along the wall and something along the floor. I'm going to add adding two colliders. But for now, let's just adjust this collider here. Um, let's set this one up. So instead, we are at, uh, let me see my magic numbers. This is all fine. We actually want to change the size of it to 510, and we want to change this to 10. So it is much smaller. And we want to change this value here to, uh, Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I got this wrong. This number here should be 366, and this number here should be 10. Bang. All right, that gives us a really skinny, skinny section. All right, and now we kind of want to move this into place. We can either leave it here if we're fine with that, that location for the players actually hitting it. Uh, I'm not really sure. We can either move it here or we can move it back. Oops. We can move it back slightly in the, in the Z. So it kind of takes up the wall space. So let's say we wanted it right there. It doesn't really matter where you put it. All you want to make sure is that the character cannot walk through the wall. So wherever you decide to put it is probably perfectly fine. I'm going to add in one more component right now. Add component. I'm going to add another physics object, a brand new box collider. Once again, it will take on the same form as the first one. And I'm just going to change this one here so it's along the floor so our character can walk into this section as well. My magic numbers are 7 minus 4. This is supposed to be 35, which is great. 510. This value should be 10. And that's perfectly fine. There we go. So right now you can see that I've got a collider along the floor and a collider along the wall. This is going to prevent my character from walking over it. Let's move our actual wall in this place a little bit better here. Let's say just like that. If I hit play, I'll turn off maximize on play. If I hit play right now, you can see, first of all, this is occluded my character. We can't actually see my character in any way, which stinks. Uh, but my character, let me see if I can run into it, can't run through the wall. Okay, I can't run through the wall at all. All right. So that's good. That's exactly how I want it to work. But we still have this issue right here of occlusion. Uh, I don't want, I want to be able to see my character through the wall whenever he's behind it. All right. So let's make a couple of quick adjustments. Now there's, there's various methods of being able to tell whether or not something is occluding the character. There's various methods of doing so. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is stick with a very simplistic method that everyone who's gone through my, my uh, series or watching this for the first time should understand. Um, fairly typical is shooting a ray from the camera at the player, the player character. Uh, shooting a ray from the camera in the direction of the character and if it intersects something then fade that out or, or what have you. Uh, we're going to do something very similar. Instead, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to use, instead of using a ray, 
we're actually going to use a collider. So I'm going to go to my main camera, and on the main camera, we're going to have to add a number of different things. Now, what we want to do is we want to add to the main camera, first of all, a collider. And I'll simply add a box collider. So come on here, add, and I'm going to say physics, and I'm going to say box collider. When I do, the box collider is just going to surround the camera just like it did with anything else. Now obviously, this is not anywhere near large enough. We want to make sure that the collider is going to touch, uh, touch something. So obviously, it's not going to touch anything up there. What I want to do is change the size of my collider, first of all. So I'm going to change it so it is at, centered at 008. All right. And I'm going to increase the size of my collider to x equals 5 and z equals 12. So now you can see I've got this long collider. Okay, I've got this long collider that is currently pointed at the character. Now what I want to do, I want to make sure that this collider can trigger something else. I don't want this collider to, to interfere with any of the walls. I don't want to interfere with the character or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this is a trigger. All right, And in doing so, this object now uh, will now pass through anything else with the collider, but it will automatically send out information. Well, it will when we're done. It'll send out information to uh, either of the objects that have been collided with. Okay, That's the first thing I want to do. The next thing I want to do is I want to go back to my wall, back to my original wall, bang, right here, the very top layer. And on this top layer of my wall, I'm going to add a, a, a a collider as well. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to say physics, I'm going to say box collider. Now I've got this new collider in here and we're going to adjust the size of it. I want it to be uh, located at y equals 190. I want it to have a size of 510 in the z. I want it to have a y value of 300 and I want it to have a z value of 10. Oops, 10. Alright, so you can see my collider right here. That's my additional collider, and I can move it out. I can move it anywhere I want, really. Maybe I'll move it out in the Z a little bit, just to make sure that we we get some collision in here. Let's put this out at, let's say, uh, 15. Let's put it out at 25. That should be perfectly fine. And you know what? We might as well make it a little bit wider, too. I'm going to make it a little bit wider in the Z. Let's make it a width of 20. Ah, you know, let's make it a width of 50. <laughs> I'm making these numbers up right now. All right, so that gives us a nice, wide collider. All right. Uh, what we're hoping is that the collider from our camera is going to collide with this. Now, once again, we don't want this to be a trigger. So this is going to be a trigger value. It's not going to in any way affect our character or anything else that's banging into it. OK. Now, what we want to do is we want to add a component to our wall. And I'm going to simply add a brand new script. New script. And this new script is going to be called uh, fade. Let's call it fade walls. Fade walls. I mean, this can fade anything, obviously, not to just be walls, but it's going to be our fade wall script. And the fade wall script is not going to be too terribly long. So let's double click and open it up. Opens up in another location right over here. Now, uh, and everything's red. Let's just give it a minute to kick in. And we want to add a number of different things in here. There we go. We want to add a number of different things in here. Uh, so once again, we're going to add in a, uh, a reference to the renderer. All right, and the renderer basically holds uh, our our material and everything like that. So my renderer. Okay, we'll call it my renderer, and we're going to add in a bool that we'll call uh, fade out, and we'll set it equal to false to start off with. All right, and basically, when if fade out is true, if our fade out value is true, we want the wall to fade out, and if our fade out value is is false, we want our wall to be solid. Okay, that's basically the idea behind this. So um, right now in our start, we're gonna find our renderer, and our renderer in this in this situation, our renderer is not actually located on the wall itself. Right here, we can see we don't actually have a renderer associated with this wall. If we look down below in this crew section right here, I don't know why it's clicking so late now. If we look down here, we've got ourselves our mesh renderer right in this location. So it's not actually in the same location as a script. It's actually a child. It's actually in the in the child of our actual top uh, top asset. So what we want to do instead of looking in in the regular location where we looked last time, my renderer is going to be equal to get component in children and make sure you choose in in children right here. Make sure you choose get component in children, not get components. It won't work otherwise. All right. Well, it will, but it'll be looking for more than one. So in our case, we're looking for a renderer. Let's put our renderer in here. Renderer. 
and bang, bang, bang. That is a default. That's the typical uh, setup right there. All right, so this will give us our reference to our renderer, and we'll be able to use that information now to make some changes. Down in the update, right down in the update, uh, we're going to add a couple of things here. We're going to add an if statement. So if fade out, so if fade out is true, we want something to happen. Else. So if else if fade out is false, obviously, then we want something else to occur. I spelled else wrong. Else, we want something else to occur. So file, save. OK, so what do we want to occur? If fade out is true, if fade out is true, we want to actually change the alpha of our material. All right? So we're going to add a lot of code in here. My renderer dot, and we're taking a look for the material dot color that's what we're looking for so we're actually looking for that aspect of it that's where the alpha itself is actually located what we want to do is we want to change from one color to the other so my color is going to be equal to color all right and we're going to be using a color lerp which allows us to change from one color to another all right and it's going to take first of all our initial color which is going to be my renderer dot material dot color so it's going to lerp from this location, and we're going to lerp to a new color, a uh, new color, and our new color is going to be, still it's going to have a value of 1, so our, your value goes from 0 to 1. It's going to have a value of 1 for the red, comma, a value of 1F, one, uh, one excuse me, 1F for the green, and 1F uh, for the blue. Now in the alpha is where we actually want to change it and you can decide how how solid or not solid this is. I'm going to change it to 0 decimal 25 F. All right, so it's going to be 25 percent of the alpha value is what I'm going to change it into. Okay, and I want to lerp this at a specified speed. And I'm just going to put in a hard value in here. 5 uh, times time dot delta time. All right, so it's going to lerp over over uh, a smoothing value of 5 over time dot delta time. So that's what we want to do if fade out is true. All right, And obviously, a lerp, and when it gets to a point where it's at this, the lerp will no longer trigger because it, there's nothing to lerp to. OK, now, what if fade out is false? We want this thing to solidify again. We're going to use exactly the same line. Let's just grab this line instead of typing it over again. Let's copy this, and let's paste it right here. Boom. Let's get rid of this extra extra space. All right, so this time it's the opposite. So instead we want to lerp from our color, which is at when it's when we're actually false. It's going to be zeroed out here. It's going to be this one here. We want to work from our current color and we want to lerp to a value of 1f. So this time here we're moving back to a solid alpha, all right? 100% alpha. Okay? I'm going to file and I'm going to save this. Uh, now, there's a couple of things we need to do here. First of all, we haven't actually set it up so that so that this thing triggers, all right? So that fade out is never changed. Fade out starts off as false and it stays false. What we want to do is we're going to add a void on trigger enter. So whenever whenever something enters, whenever another collider enters this uh, trigger, it's going to trigger this event. And it takes in one collider, takes in one parameter. We'll just call it other, which is pretty standard. And we will add that. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so whenever another collider enters this trigger, it's going to check to see what it is. And we want to make sure it's the camera. Now, how do we know if it's the camera? Let's go back and take a look at our camera. Uh, camera, 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 camera. Here it is, main camera. Our main camera, I don't know why this is not clicking properly. Our main camera has a tag of main camera. That's default. It comes like that default. So we can identify whether or not the collider, which we've added to our main camera, has a tag of main camera. If it does, then we've actually collided with the main camera. That makes sense, right? All right, so let's go over here. Let's go over here. And in our, we're going to add an if statement. If other dot tag equals equals quotations main camera. So if we act, if the object that collides with actually has the, actually has the tag of main camera, all we want to do is set fade out equal to true. That's it. That's all we want to do. Okay? And that'll automatically kick this into place. Now, obviously, we're going to have a void on oops, I'm hitting the wrong thing here. Escape. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. On trigger exit. So whenever the other trigger exits or something the collider exits this, this will be uh, clicked off. Uh, collider. Collider. And again, we'll call it other. And once again, we're gonna we're just gonna grab that. Let's just grab all this. 
So edit copy and paste it here. Paste. So in this case, exactly the same way, if the other collider is a main camera, then we want to set our fade out to be false. Okay, so basically whenever it comes in, if it's the camera, set it to true, it kicks in here, goes through this every update, and whenever it kicks out, it automatically kicks into here and kicks into here, all right? So let's file save that then. Now, we've got a couple of problems right here. Uh, within our, let's go back and take a look at our material. Let's go back and take a look at our walls material. The walls material is currently set up to be standard shader, which is great, and the rendering mode is opaque. Well, there's actually four different rendering modes. There's opaque, there's cutout, there's fade, and there's transparent. Now, we're interested in either fade or transparent because both of those give us, pardon me, gives access to the alpha value. Excuse me. <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> uh, sorry. <laughs> both of those gives us access to the alpha value of the color itself. All right. We can't actually fade this out. We can't actually fade. We can't actually uh, fade out the alpha unless we're either in rendering mode fade or transparent. Now, what's the difference between the two? Transparent will always leave behind the the uh, the specular reflection. So even though you faded it all the way up to zero, it's going to leave behind the specular reflection of the object. Fade, on the other hand, will automatically remove everything including the specular reflection so that's completely up to you it's gonna be completely up to you which one you decide to use alright I'm gonna go with transparent and that way we still might get a little bit of sheen or something like that from the actual wall itself okay so I'm gonna change this to transparent instead alright transparent great now that's automatically changed this now it doesn't look any different to us right now it doesn't look any different to us right now now there's one more thing we need to do if I hit play this is not gonna work nothing is gonna work right now Oh, let's maximize on play so you can see if I hit play right now, uh, nothing has actually happened here. Nothing's actually changed. And the reason why nothing has changed is because in order for these, these triggered events to occur, one of the objects in, included within this, within this collision has to have a rigid body associated with it. And currently, neither our wall nor our camera has a rigid body. Now, whichever one you decide to, you could add it to either one. It doesn't really matter which one you decide to add it to. Uh, I think ultimately I'm just going to add it to the camera, all right, rather than have a gabillion extra rigid bodies within the scene. I'm just going to add a single rigid body uh, to this camera. So I'm going to go to the, the main camera, I'm going to say add component, and I'm going to say uh, physics, and I'm going to add a rigid body. Now, if I leave it like this, watch what happens. I hit play, and uh, it falls away. Now that's kind of a disaster. You saw that it actually it actually uh, faded out my, my, my wall, uh, but it falls off the screen. So in order to avoid that, what we can do is we can go down here and we can say turn off use gravity and we can turn on is kinematic. Now is kinematic means basically uh, that that uh, forces and gravity, nothing affects us in the scene. No forces or anything else will affect us within the scene. Okay, so if later on we add an explosion or something like that, the camera will go flying off into space. So now if I hit play, our wall is faded out. I can move around and as I move away from the wall, the wall fades back in. All right, so that's going to allow us to see our character, to see our player directly through any kind of uh, occluding objects. All right, guys, that I think is going to be the end of this episode. That's all I really want to tackle. Hopefully, you guys can go through and do that. What you want to do now, of course, is go to your prefabs, drag your walls into the prefab so you've got the walls set up and you can add them as often as you want. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know. I hope your games are going really, really well. I look forward to seeing them in the end. Good luck, everyone. Anyway, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.